Hi, this is Lou Covey of Foot Washer Media, and I'm here with another one of our weird video discussions with Joe Basquez. We were going to do this on Hangouts, but for some reason, Google isn't cooperating again, so we're doing it the old-fashioned way and recording it for later viewing. Good morning, Joe. Good morning. <laughs> you kind of went off on a rant that I participated with earlier. And I will let's let's revisit that and and see where we can go with this about what the importance of content is. Yeah, so there's really so many things to talk about. It's actually kind of interesting. Um, what you and I had been talking about was was uh, kind of taking a look at is the state of uh, content marketing right now because I think a lot of times you and I get on this call, we talk about specifics, things like strategy, things like how to get engagement. And we don't take a look at the overall market. And then you ran across an article from a PR guru that basically said that uh, content marketing isn't new, it isn't different, it's essentially just marketing and PR like we've always done. Um, that just rubs me wrong in so many different ways. Uh, and so we kind of went off on a rant there. And I wanted to talk a little bit about it because they're not the same. No. And looking at the state of where we are with content marketing, this thought is actually the biggest problem we have to seeing success in content marketing. Yeah. The problem is that people think they're doing content marketing by taking their press releases or their brochures and they say, okay, this is a piece of content, which it is, but then they push it into something like, a Twitter, a Facebook, a blog, some kind of social media, and they say, we're doing content marketing. That's not content marketing. No. That wasn't designed to get any kind of engagement. And it's actually kind of Einstein's definition of insanity, is that you take those same pieces and same tools, same things, you put them in a different channel, and you just expect different results. Yeah. Um, um, it doesn't work. Yeah, yeah it doesn't work. Uh, and... Yeah, I think the best example of that this week is you sent me a link to the Global Semiconductor Association market or, or, or website to highlight their annual report where they give you three pages of why semiconductors are important. And they completely missed the mark. They, they said it's, it's important because there are a lot of them and we're making a lot of them. And it's a big part of the economy. It's trillions of dollars. Neither of that explains why it's important. They, they, it's, like, it's like saying the guy who makes bricks is very important. Well, yeah, because there are bricks everywhere. There are millions there are of them. there are a lot of bricks and that's it, right? Yeah. That's all the explanation. Yeah, and, and that doesn't mean anything because, and, and well, it does mean something to the people who are in the industry. Okay. Not the people that are buying the products, but the people that are in the industry. Yes, this is why we're important. But the reality is, is that that means nothing to the people that they're actually trying to reach. Guys like you and me. Why is that important? Okay, It's important because we, you and I are able to have this communication. It's important because I'm able to get into a car uh, and, and contact uh, OnStar and get directions to a place in San Francisco that I don't know. Those are re the reasons this stuff is important, and that's, that's what's missing in most content marketing. We spend all of our money and time talking about things that we've already talked about that mean nothing to the audience. And well, that's why content marketing is not PR and advertising. And I think that here's an interesting interesting thing is that I think when you look at the numbers, when you look at the surveys, most people, the prevailing thought right now is that taking a, a piece of traditional marketing and putting it in a new channel is content marketing. And That's the reason right. I say that is because if you look at Content Marketing Institute's latest survey, it says that most people, 95% of companies don't have a strategic plan for how they're going to use social. Well, what does that mean? That means they're taking their old traditional stuff, putting it in these new channels, and expecting it to work. What does the survey tell you? It doesn't work. These companies that don't have a new strategy, 
It's because they're taking that old stuff and at the end they don't get the results they want and they go, this stuff doesn't work. It doesn't work because you're not actually doing it. Yeah, and that's that's where that's where the real confusion comes in about people saying, well, it's just what we've been doing for years. Is because, yeah, it is what you've been doing for years. But what we're telling you is that what you've been doing for years past hasn't been working in the past 10 years, most specifically in the past five years. And it's not going to work. It's, but the fact is, everybody else is doing it except for a very small percentage. And the companies that are doing extremely well right now are the ones that know this. Right. The other thing about this is we've just discussed a content marketing institute, right? There are entire yeah. institutions, businesses. There are new divisions of analyst groups that are devoted to studying this. Yeah. If this was nothing more than traditional marketing and traditional PR, we wouldn't need these new institutions. We wouldn't need these new analyst groups and divisions. We wouldn't need to look at this. It's not the same thing. And anyone who thinks it's the same thing won't be successful trying to do it that way. Yeah, but here's, here's the thing is that because 95% of them are doing it that way, they don't really know what's wrong. Exactly. Yeah. So that's the point that I hope to get across today, that these things are not the same as traditional marketing, okay? And if you don't understand the difference, first of all, you're probably not going to be successful. But there are guys like you and me who love to talk about this stuff. We love to do it. There are resources to help you. If you don't get it or you just want to get a little more information, it's easy to find. Yeah, and part of that is going to the footwashermedia.com website. It's all there. Go to the Content Marketing Institute website. Go to Altimeter Group. Go to Foresters if you like the more traditional stuff. They're all saying the same thing. Uh, but I, I'd like to end this on a positive note, okay? Because here's what we, what you and I have discovered, Joe, and it's, it's something that we've kind of realized in the past six months, that when you understand that it's not the same as PR, that it's not the same as advertising, it's not the same as marketing communications, that it's an entirely different discipline, you also start finding that the amount of money and time you have to invest in advertising, public relations, and marketing, and the amount of money you have to spend on those things can be significantly lessened if you take a strategic approach to your content. Uh, it's something we, we discovered, and you know, we've, we've talked about this briefly, and I put it on a, a Facebook post, that most companies think they have a strategy when they have a, a statement of where they want to go at the front of their strategic document, quote-unquote strategic document. And then they have a spreadsheet of tactics that are supposed to get them there. But your strategy determines where you are today and where you want to get to. And it should be a separate document from everything else. Then you have a document of tactics that have been measured against that strategic plan. Will this tactic get us further or keep us in the same place? Will it get us to the final goal? Those are the questions that have to be asked for every tactic you do. And when you do that, suddenly you start finding that your tactics start getting less and less and less, which means you have to spend less and less and less on resources. Okay? And it gets you there faster. That's why it's important to realize this is not the same as PR. It's completely different. It's a strategic approach to communications. So... Before we sign off, Tula, I think there's something really interesting here that I want to I want to get your opinion on. I talk to a lot of marketing and, and PR professionals, and I think some of them think that the traditional things that we do are content marketing because there is a, a an amount of fear that they have to learn something new or that this content marketing thing will take some of their budget away. And those kind of things. Yeah, it's not true. That, that there's this, there's this, this, you know, this, this fight, right? But you are a person who actually owned a PR agency. You saw where this thing was going and, and the direction you thought it was going to take, and you changed that. You changed everything about it. You changed your model. You changed, you know, everything the way that you do it because you believed in this. What would you say to somebody who says, you know, 
it's kind of scary, right? Something new mm-hmm. I've got to learn or I'm going to fall behind. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. It's you really don't add anything but spending a little bit more time. Determine the intentionality of what you're doing. Most most marketing communications programs in every company that I've seen runs on what they used to think the way it was supposed to be done. They don't think, like like the GSA, they don't put any thought into what it is they're saying and why they're saying it. They don't put any thought into the, into the process of creating the content. But when you do that, suddenly you free up time because now you're working more efficiently. You know where you are and where you're going to go. And what we're finding is that we can come in and we've done several proposals in the past couple of weeks using this protocol where we go in and say, look, we're going to come in here. We're going to work with you for three months. And when we're done, you're going to have a really good idea of where you're going and what you have to do to get there. You're not going to have to be spinning your wheels and you're going to be able to to have clear guidelines as to what your deliverables and what your expectations can be. And it's 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 going to it's it's going to reduce your sales cycle. It's going to reduce uh, the amount of money you're spending on the on these things, and you're going to become better at your job because you're not going to have to be doing the things that you're not good at. Things that don't get the ROI. So I think to 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 really just summarize what you said is what content marketing actually makes everything else better. Yes. It doesn't make it go away. It makes it better. Yes. It makes it more effective. And I should have said that that way. <laughs> I mean, that's just it. I mean, we actually work with some PR agencies to make what they do better. Yes. And it's, it's not an issue of the budget goes here or there. We want everybody to be successful. And yep. there is enough business to go around. There's enough need for content and for strategy for everyone to be good, yeah. to be in good shape. Yeah. But I think bottom line is for those people who don't understand that it is different, they won't be successful at it. Nope. And that's what they've got to do. It's You've got to do it differently because the old stuff doesn't work the way you think it does. And that, I think, is it for the day. We've ranted enough. <laughs> so thanks for your time, Joe. And everyone, thanks for listening. This has been Lou Covey and I'll Joe Vasquez with Fort Washington Media. <laughs>